So we would like to. So as I pour the water, uh, you call on an ancestor that um, is a national ancestor, an ancestor that we all share in common. Um, I'll start it off with um, Honorable Marcus Gaffey. Ashe. Malcolm X. Ashe. Elijah Muhammad. Ashe. Harold Tubbs. Ashe. Bob Marley. Ashe. Double Drew Ali. Ashe. Nathaniel Brown. Ashe. Denmark V.C. Ashe. Matt Turner. Ashe. Kwame Nkrumah. Ashe. 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 Ashe.
and he brings it home simply and plainly with massive documentation as he does like to do. The African World Order, we hear so much about the New World Order. We're into the African World Order because that's the order that it has to be as it was in the beginning, so it should be in the end. He's been a frequent guest on my program, Potential Vibes, and people are always asking for him. I took him to the federal penitentiary about two weeks ago. He turned that out. I don't know if they're going to ever let me come back. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, it's my pleasure, indeed, to bring forward our brother, Bobby Hemmings. and the whole black history movement and uh, uh, found myself drawn to Kemet and um, recently Atlantis and I met a beautiful sister by the name of um, Tracy. I can't think of she said not only did Atlantis exist but I was there and she was there. We were also in, Kem in Kemet also. And then I found out something else. Uh, two week, uh, about two nights ago, they put their head on all of this stuff, and I know this stuff is divinely guided. Number one, when I got into uh, the metaphysical side of the African history of the mystery system, um, I was particularly drawn to the, the, the dog star called Sirius, or uh, they would say Sotis, Greek, or Sept, and Kemet, or Sabdu, which means Horace and Sirius. There's many names. Uh, Sabdu, uh, the group Blue Star Krishna or something by the uh, Hopi Indians and also we have the dog the apple in, in, in Kemet. We have a, an animal called the Griffey in, in, in equatorial Africa, deep into the heartland of Africa called the Griffey. This dog could, they could see behind, um, in the front of it and in the back of it. They say, well, this is the animal that we want to choose to uh, give some type of indication of where we are from and what is watching old, over us. And also the coyote in ancient Indian um, uh, folklore is this particular animal. Well, why the dog, number one? I, uh, why the dog? Number one, a dog sits on a porch. And a dog barks if danger comes. Or certain cycles, certain things, a dog will let you know what time it is. So therefore, it was a great symbol to you if you want to say the jackal in Kemet or the dog that the Europeans call it the dog star. And it was a great symbol because it meant the time of warning, the time of judgment, and some indication of time cycles. This is why it is called the dog star in the constellation of Canis Major or Canis Major. Uh, also, it was uh, known as a jackal. In, in, in Africa, the jackal or the hyena, because the jackal and the hyena, when it's, the young does not go out and hunt the food. The mother goes out and hunts the food, and what it does is it eats the food, chews it up, then comes back and regurgitate it to the young. Well, it's some type of um, showing some type of great provider or some type of, of uh, providing for a family. And also, it means also because of you Taking in something and regurgitating it, it means it was a cycle that would come around again. What comes around goes around. So it was the ideal thing. I just want to give you that bit of information on the dog. Um, but there's some good information that I got about, uh, about uh, two days ago. Um, went, to, went to the uh, store. Every now and then you'll get a European that tells the truth. Old white woman. I've been seeing her stuff. Her name is Anna Marie Carlton. Old white woman in her 70s. Well, she wrote this. She might be dead. I don't know. She wrote this book in 78. In, in, um, the name of this book is uh, Kundalini West. And she wrote it in 1978. Uh, uh, One interesting thing when she started dealing with the zodiacs or the actual astronomical or astrological signs of, you know, Sagittarius, Gemini, Taurus, when it got to my sign, she said, well, this person, number one, on the negative side, if he was on alcohol or whatever type thing, he would be a total drunk or a total crackhead or whatever because 
his sign means that he would be highly addicted to alcohol, cocaine, caffeine, and all of this. Well, I read, I read that and I said, well, I've overcome that cycle, so I don't have to worry about that. Then it said that if he was, if he was into women, he would uh, be very lustful. He would be very lustful and he would chase women and all of this type thing. And um, she gave a whole lot of things on the negative side. And at the end, she gave what is on the positive side. And she said, well, one thing about the positive side of this Sagittarian, which I am a Sagittarius born uh, July, I mean, um, um, November 28th, uh, 1961. That makes me 31 now. Uh, she said that if he gets over his uh, low life and starts going to the path of light, this particular Sagittarius, or uh, this Sagittarian, will chase the star Sirius to illuminate himself. And I said, well, isn't that something? Now, I've, been, I've been dealing with this stuff, and I couldn't break away from this cycle. I've been dealing with it for a year. And for some reason, I go in the store, and it's hard to find stuff on this particular incident, this particular subject. The European hardly ever writes on it. When he does write, he writes good little information on it, but there's hardly no work on it. Yet when you go to Africa and, and, and Kemetic civilization, this was the only star in sight. They call it the one star in sight because at one time you could see it in the daytime. You could see it in the daytime. It's the brightest star in heaven. And, the, the, and, and I mean, everything that they did was broken down and revolved around this star. Your particular year, the same year that you have today, is based on this particular star. This is where you get your year from. Your civilization, where you have the rising of the Nile, it planted, planted the, the vegetation in the summertime because of this star would rise and the water of the Nile would rise and run over. Your particular civilization as far as agriculture is based off of this star. And the point I'm trying to make is what I'm getting into today is the people, the actual people, you, brothers and sisters, you are based off of this star also. We are the people of God. And number one, you know, I, if you, I've, I've seen some of my videos, I, I said that, uh, I often said that the Dogon said that this was heaven. The Egyptians said that this was heaven. But this is the point that I want to bring to you today is the science of the heaven and the science that you are God and this science that I have uh, brought forth proves it and the white boy knows it. That it does, the buck stops with you. You are God. So we need to get into this. I want to start, number one, I want to start with the Temple of Dendera. Uh, tell the brother, give me some water whenever, you know. Uh, uh, I want to start with the Temple of Dendera. Very interesting about this temple. Now, the Temple of Dendera was built in Alexandria, Egypt, or Alexandria, Kemet, at a time when the Greeks invaded and the Egyptian priests knew that, hey, we're not going to be around for, uh, uh, for eternity. We're going to fall eventually. It took a couple of hundred years after that. When you, recent, when you later had the Arab invasion of Kemet, it came in and that was the end of it, which the Arabs occupy Kemet to this day. But you had several invasions, the Turks, you had the, the Greeks, you had the Romans, you had the Hyksos, and you had um, the Persians. You had several invasions. But one of the first invasions or one of the invasions that they knew that they could get the job done, number one, the Greeks were the most advanced of the European cultures. So now when the Greeks came into Kemet, the Greeks were actually a little bit terrified of the priests. So the priests could get the Greeks to do what they wanted to do. The Greeks were just running the thing, but the, running the state, but the actually behind them, the priests were still running things. So the priest said, hey, look, we need, a, we need a new temple. So they built a couple of brand new temples in the Ptolemy period. One is the temple of Edfu, uh, temple of Horus at Edfu. One is the temple of Isis at Philae, which is the last temple that they closed. And when they closed this temple, Europe immediately went into a dark age. That's the temple of Isis at Philae. One of the, these three temples that they built, one of the, some of the, uh, are still the temples that's the most preserved. Then you have the temple of Hathor at Dendera, one of the same temples. Now, it's interesting about this temple. This temple was built around the star Sirius. It's the reason why this temple was built. Now, not so much of the, the temple, but what was in the temple and what is on the hieroglyphic inscriptions of the temple. Like I said in many of my tapes, this was called the land of God, and everything they did was a religious purpose. We just build now just to be building for commercial purposes. 
They built everything. If they didn't have a, have a religious purpose, they didn't build it. So they went from spirituality to the manifestation of technology. Now we go to the manifestation of technology to destruction or whatever. And all. Now, inside of this temple, and I always start my lectures with this, is the temple in the zodiac of Dendera. Uh, and I used to give our handouts and stuff, but you know, we'll get some later on, whatever. Uh, is the zodiac of Dendera. With, and, and this represents the zodiac, which is not just an astrological zodiac, but an astronomical zodiac. And this astronomical zodiac is gives you all of the stars, all of the gods, and all of the actual ages. And in the middle, they show what I always do, and I should have brought the, uh, the hand out to show you this, but hippopotamus god is called Athen, a tire, which is the primordial womb of the celestial womb of the birthplace of it all, of the blackness of the darkness of the triple space of the universe, as the Muslim, Ahmad Muhammad, said it, we came from the triple darkness of space. Well, the information that I got out of Kim and the demon was just that. It's unbelievable. Right here she's having that dog, which is that jackal, which is her first son, which is the manifestation of her. You see, she's called either Newt, which is a later manifestation of Athen, a tiger. It's called nothing. From the nothing, you get the absolute. The nothing is triple blackness. And because it is so black until uh, it, it manifests itself with the brightest light, this is the laws of science and the laws of the universe. So from the nothingness, you get the absolute. You get the all in all, which means what? Allah. You see how these things correlate? We're going to go through a lot of religious things. So if you're in a particular religion, hey, I'm going to have you in this witness because you are not uh, exempt from this. So. You have this, this first dog, a jackal, is called Seb or Sut, S-U-T, Sut, Sut, which means black. And it is the first primordial god of history. If you trace history back, this particular primordial dog, a god, is called Sut. But he has a mother, and that mother is called Tyre, Athet, or Newt, which means the blackness of space. Sut is a blue-black God, but he manifests light. Keep this in mind because this is about you. In this, they're showing a certain age of things. Now, this particular soot typhon, which is later on a fallen God that you know as Set Typhon, but this is another whole series of events that go on in Kemet where you have Osiris and Osirian drama. But this particular uh, a god in this particular hippopotamus was not in the actual uh, dynastic period of Kemet. Now, wait a minute. Here it is. They know they're going out. So the temples that they build now, it's going to be some stuff that we catch across the Atlantic about 3,000 years later. You understand? They got Osiris, or Osa, or Aset, or Heru, Osiris, Isis or Horus, for those of you who don't know, and Set Typhon, which is the, the, the adversary of his brother Osiris. They have these gods, but they build this temple and they put these gods of an older time. You see, your other uh, deities come out of this and it's a later representation of this. But why would, why would you put Osiris at the forefront? Why would you put the blue black god Sut and Athet? which is no more than an uh, earlier representation of Isis, or uh, Aset, and Heru. You get the, you, you, are you following me? Why would they give you that particular gods and goddesses in such a late period when they didn't even use these gods and goddesses that much in the whole 3,000 to 4,000 year dynastic period? It is because this god, Sut, was known as a fallen god and is later represented as the devil or an evil god, but it is a fallen god. You see, this is how the story goes. He's represented as a fallen god, but he's represented also as the astronomical phase of Sirius, which was the first in heaven. It was the first of seven other sons, but it was the first in heaven of seven other daughters called the seven half -thaws. It was the first in glory. 
But as the time cycle went on, some people forgot what time it was, is basically what's going on. Now, let me go into some things. Let's trace this to the Christian text and try to understand what's really going on. This God Soot is represented as, and this is, is represented as El Sada in the, uh, the Sumerian text. It's called El Sada or El Sadi. The Jews later on get the word Jehovah from this same God. You see, now we have a link between, if we're talking about this Jehovah or Jah, the Arabs later on get the word Allah from the same God. You, do you follow me? These are just different times, the same principle. And it goes all the way back to what? This, this, this dog Sirius, or this, this God Soot, astronomical counterpart was what? The star Sirius. Do you follow me? I'm trying to link this in with the, with, with the heaven context of things. Now, why did they give you this? They understood that, uh, let me get this right now, okay. They understood that it was a certain God that used to rule the earth, and that God later on will come again to rule again as what goes around comes around. What is in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. Now, when you're dealing with the Greeks, the Greeks came and they got a person named Manetho, a high priest, Manetho. And they said, well, we want you to tell us the history of, of Egypt, the history of Kemet. He said, okay, I'll tell you the history of Kemet. Number one, there was 500 pharaohs in the dynastic period. That's 3,000 years. There's 800 pharaohs in the pre-dynastic period. That's uh, about 3,500, uh, that's about 5,000 years. They say, well, who used to rule before then? They say, oh, that's when the whole bunch of gods used to rule. That's when the whole bunch of gods used to rule. Well, what do they mean by that? Well, it goes like this. This particular calendar is not talking about Kemet because Kemet is the later version of having to put the pieces back together of something that happened about 90,000 years ago, maybe 2 million years ago. There's no trace when it comes to the birth because we forgot to take care of time and we forgot what time it was. And this is how it goes. At one particular time on Earth, you have the Lemuria or the continent of Mu, then later on you would have the continent of Atlantis that comes out of that. You had one race of people, black people. That's all it was. We are the prototype of what this planet is supposed to be seated with. You, 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 you follow me? We are the rootstock of what this planet originally had. Other races, we even say, well, the white man, he didn't come here for 6,000 years, debate or whatever. But we're talking about other races, Chinese, Indian, all of them. That is later. We're talking about ruling the earth for millions of years. What happened was, is the reason why they showed you the beginning is a group of beings, supposedly, from Sirius, a group of gods came down and seeded the planet. Well, what does that mean? It just means, some people say it was they, they just, they came down and they, they, they bred with, with a certain amount of people. But what happened was this, a group of gods, and we'll explain this God factor when we go on. A group of gods came to Earth, supposedly, and set up camp here, basically. What happened was, as time went on for millions of years, all they had to do was one thing, was to keep track of time. The time when you entered, which would mean the time from where you came from the time that you are now. Somehow the esoteric timekeeping got mixed up and they lost the track of time. In an esoteric, in a, in, in, in a metaphysical type of structure, time is everything as well as time is not even relevant. But they lost the track of time. And as of losing track of time, later on, the earth, which was in a four-
by having a physical form at one time, the point that we're trying to get to where you want your pineal gland, your kundalini, your chakras, and your third eye open so you can be, be to the level of God or become the level of God. All black people on the planet at this particular time were those particular people that we're trying to get to now. But as time went on and they sunk into a fourth dimensional density, the third eye closed up and they started relying more on physical abilities. This is when Kemet comes along and the, Af and, and the mystery system schools come along to try to teach black people to get back to their original state in which the time when all the people became gods. We, we suspect that this time lasted from Atlantis, from the fall of Atlantis, which is actually slipping into a third dimension, all the way up to when Manetho said, right before the, right, right before the uh, dynastic period, we had, that's the time when all the gods used to rule. So we're talking roughly 10,000 years ago. It took them that long, even though they started falling and, and time got more and more out of sync. Later on, leading to the destruction of black people coming across the Atlantic and becoming slaves and losing all memory. But we're talking about that time, it took about a couple of thousands of years. Now, Kemet that we know of is actually the decline state, all of it. And even though it's the decline state, it's still greater than anything that we have, that the European or any other civilization have built since it fell. Now, isn't that something? You mean to tell me we were such gods till our decline was greater than anything this world has seen in this 25,000 year period. We'll get into the 25,000 year uh, period. So they got, so what happened with this elder race at the beginning is this elder race, by them forgetting time, they got trapped in this particular uh, cycle or they got trapped on the third dimension. And to make a long story short, from then on, the gods, the same gods that you worship, the same gods that you worship, be it uh, Osiris or whatever, was a lineage of those gods or the elder race that got trapped. Is everybody clear with what I'm saying? Because we're going to link this home with, with, with Christianity, Islam, Judaism, and all. Does anybody, anybody have any questions on this type of stuff or whatever? If you do, we'll answer them. If, if you know me, I get long-winded. We'll answer them at the end. Now, going to Atlantis. Atlantis was the time when you had the blue men that used to walk the earth, the blue men from Atlantis. These blue men were seen all over the world. If you go to the Hindu texts, if you get into the Hindu texts or any of the texts out of India, you would see blue people actually on the paintings. You just go to get any books on India, you'd see these blue people. Well, in actuality, they have them a little light blue, but they were actually darker blue, darker blue people. Now, um, these people were seen all over the world. And they say the blue men from Sirius. Well, what do they mean by that? The blue men from Sirius that lived in Atlantis, they meant a person so black until the sky reflects that shadow off of them, you know, that cast that, and it looks blue. They just say blue men and let you know that they were black. You understand? But it was these blue men in particular and all. Now, going into Egypt, or Kemet, Isis in a text, and I want to read this to you. Isis in the Egyptian text is known as bringing agriculture to the world, which is a black woman. You, you, you check? Now, there is Osiris, Isis, space beings from the planet Canis Major. Did Isis bring wheat and corn from Canis Major in the constellation, from, um, from, Canis, from the Canis Major constellation? An earth origin of wheat has not been discovered. Supposedly, she brought wheat and she brought agriculture to the particular, uh, this particular earth. So what they're showing you is there's a link between space and a link between earth. And the problem is we talk about heaven, but we don't know where it is. You see, this is the point I'm trying to make with you because I understand it. My whole point to go today is we have so many religions, so many ide ideologies, but we don't, we, we cannot 
have a common bound. We just say, well, we know it's all God, but we don't know where it is. And this is where the white boy has got a new story for you, and he's trying to redirect you in another path, you see. Don't fall for it because you have Blavatsky and the whole Theosophical Society that is, um, this whole Theosophical Society, what they're doing is they are directed towards the Pleiades, which is another constellation. Now, we're going into the time of where we stand at this particular moment. Now, in this particular moment, I want to read some couple of passages for you. This is in a book called The Cosmic Doctrine by Dion Fortune. You know, The Cosmic Doctrine, page 147. It says, bear in mind, however, the sign of Gemini, for the forces signified by the sign and the influences of Atlantis will influence the earth again in the present age. Such configurations somewhat similar to those in the days of Atlantis. A certain major planetary forces, the signs are influence mankind once again. What they're saying is in the last time, this particular time when we had a certain earth or a certain cosmic force in the air was 90,000 years ago. You get that? Another thing that's going So now, the reason why I'm saying this is because we got all kind of crazy things going on. What we're into is what you call a spiritual quickening. You see, if you're thinking this way, you will quicken this way. If you're thinking nothing but ignorance, you quicken more with the ignorance. The energy is going to quicken you whether you like it or not. You have the cosmic energy that if you are thinking non-thoughts, then you will be the best at using non-thought. So you will kill a brother over, over a hot dog, and if you had thought about it a moment earlier, you wouldn't have dared done it. You see what I'm saying? I had a group of people about a month ago, boy killed the other, shot at his brother over a dog on a hot dog. They fighting over a hot dog. He shot his brother. Brother jumped out the window. The bullet ricocheted and hit the mom and killed her. Crazy stuff. The thing with Michael Jordan, the uh, um, father. I mean, heroes, and you know, I'm not getting into the basketball, but he's still a hero to a lot of people. National heroes, that's a great magnitude of, of letting you know what things going on when you have this type of thing that went on with, with his father and all. Um, just all this crazy stuff that's going on, you're having a spiritual quickening. But on the other hand, you are challenging all the stuff. You're challenging the church. You are challenging, uh, you just know things are not right, and for some reason you have chose to do much more struggling. Am I not lying? Uh, certain things that is not setting with you, certain spiritual awareness that you are, you are understanding. You are looking at the news now, and you can tell when the white boy lying. You can tell when he's lying at all. Well, let's, let's take this date and let's run this date down. Let's see when the start of it is. Bear in mind, when I give you these particular dates, remember, it's in anywhere in between that time. Because remember now, when the European put out the stuff for his people, He's not going to give, put the actual time because he don't want you to know the actual time. So he's giving you some time, but we want you to work within this time frame. But this particular date, I do believe, will be the start of something. They say once you get out of 1993, hey, you're going to be into something. Listen, it says the time, April 1994, when Sotis and Horace sought to celebrate their 50-year heroes' gambles, a holy reunion. Such close timing between the solar system, the sun, the earth, Pluto, and Neptune, and Sirius, the Sothic star occurs but once every 90,000 years. That's the same time that they're talking about this energy that was on the scene during the days of Atlantis. And during the days of Atlantis, if you were black, or you were the original people because there were no other people on the earth, you were nothing but G-O-D, God, as C. Freeman L. said, generator, operator, and destroyer. It's a difference between the creator now. Don't get me wrong. There's the creator force, and there's the God force. But remember, you are one with that. You understand? Let's deal with this God question. If I got a big, if this, if this bucket represents the universe, you say, that's the universe. That's where God is. The all in all. The almighty. And if I take a cup and dip some water out of that cup, 
Is not the contents out of that bucket, is not the contents that's in the cup the same as in the universe? Is it the same? Well, you are nothing but a smaller composite of a greater universe, which makes you God, G-O-D. As C. Freeman L. said, generator, operator, and destroyer. There's some science into that also, too. We'll get into that. Now, the Sirius Sopnik star system occurs but, but every 90,000 years, giving some inkling of a stunning rarity in evolutionary opportunity for, for humanity during the last two decades of the 20th century. Okay, we're knowing that the time that we've been talking about and when all this stuff going to jump off is yesterday. Check. Everybody in here at this moment should be about the business of liberating themselves. Go on and do what you have to do. We don't want to stop you from doing what you want to do, getting paid and getting yours. But on the other hand, you should be getting yours while you're getting some sense in your head to get the hell on out of here. We talk about that also too. Now, that leaves us to a greater point on what's going on. And that comes what we call the war in heaven. You see, about a couple of billion years ago or a couple of million years ago, the people of Sirius had a war with the people of, of, of um, Orion. Orion is known as the, the evil Sahus, and it's also known as Nimrod in the Bible, as Nimrod. See, what happens in mythology is the scientists of that day coded everything, all the science in mythology. So, you, so when you learn the religion, you learn actually geometry, physics, uh, trigonometry, and all of the sciences in one shot. Now we separate it. So, the, so, the, so Nimrod is known as an evil person that is also in the book of Job. You can check that out. There's a part about Nimrod. I'll give you the verse. Nimrod in this particular uh, Bible verse is talking about an evil sector of the universe called the evil Sahus of Orion. Now I always give out good books. I got a lot of esoteric information. Some of this stuff I can't even give out because you think I'm crazy from where I get this stuff from. But, I, but what I have done is I have checked references that you can go out and get. Some of this stuff is not available. Some of this stuff is coming from London, England, and it's not even available. But I've got references that you can check and buy in book form and get. Now, one of, the, one of the books that you need to get is this book called Other Tongues, Other Flesh by George Hunt Williamson. Other Tongues, Other Flesh by George Hunt Williamson. You see, we go to these white societies out here in Atlanta. You got the Kabbalah Society and all these different societies. Well, you go in the library, they got all these UFO books. There's some UFO books that explain the existence of UFO. The real deal white people that study the Kabbalah and all this stuff, they don't even deal with that stuff because they already know that it's UFOs. They ain't got but one book in their library. And that's this book by George Hunt Williamson. Why? Because see, George Hunt Williamson is a white UFOologist, a UFOlogist, whatever however they say this thing, of the 1950s. You see, a lot of the stuff that you get now on UFOs, uh, we say flying saucers, is into the new age. People just writing books to make money. So some of the stuff is just crazy stuff. But the thing about it is to get earlier material, and then you will understand by this earlier material, you will understand that they was the ones who was honest about it because they was right. They had to be honest because they was writing about it at a time when most of America wasn't even into it. You see, the first UFO crash that we know of, which they're saying was an actual testing crash between the Germans and the United States, was at Roswell, New Mexico, in 1947. The crash and one at Aztec uh, and all. But there's a book called the Roswell Incident too to tell you about the first UFO crash and all this stuff. But this book came out in 1954. It just was reprinted up. This year, well, back in 90, or last year, called George Hunt Williamson. Well, what makes this book more authentic than a lot of the other books that I don't fool around with is because this book here, this cat was abducted by some people from Sirius. And the information that they gave him and put in this book is somewhat close to what is going on in the future or what's going on. So this is a book that you need to get. We will have these books at Black Media Communication because we need to do this shopping in our own community. And we'll have them somewhat in the, in the next, next two or three days. So you need to get this book. Also, uh, so uh, I just wanted to put this while we go into the war in heaven. Now, what had happened was, supposedly, as Deborah Blair tells us, he said that there was a war in heaven between a planet called Tyrantar that built this big computer and didn't, it didn't want to work. 
that's connected with the Orions. And they didn't want to do any, any type of work, so they built this computer to do all the work for them. But don't, get a, don't, don't think this stuff is crazy, because remember now, Sirius B, which is the small star that the Dogon said that existed in the European, said it didn't until they, they, they got the type of stuff later on in the early part of the century to find out that these people was not lying. Now, how no way, they didn't know how, how these people could understand this stuff. Sirius B is, a, is called the Dwarf Nova because it was a burnout star that travels every 60-something years around Sirius, or 50-something years around Sirius that the Dogon told them was there. This star, it used to be a regular star. It burnt out before our sun was even formed. So we're talking about that type of technology that is so doggone advanced until the stuff that we got now is at least three, four million years old. Just the stuff that America is trying to get on to now. Some of the, 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 the new breakthroughs in science is almost three or four, five million years, maybe a billion years into the universe. You get a concept of how vast and how old this world is, including this planet, because we did things that is far more advanced. Right here on Earth, black people, then anything that America has gotten into now, we did it, did it, and then took a 10,000 year snooze on top of that. Now, they built this big computer, and when they built this big computer, it, it, it ran the planet, then it started controlling other solar systems. That's how powerful this thing was. And when it broke the interplanetary brotherhood's laws, because there's an interplanetary brotherhood that governs the universe, which the head of that is Sirius, check. Get into that. When it broke the laws, then Sirius came in because they are the most advanced, and they came in and whipped their behind. It took about 10 years. And as a result, they could, they, they re, some of them reincarnated on Earth. And we can we basically know who they're in, cahoo in cahoots with at this particular time. Now, so they had this big war in heaven. Well, I called Deborah Blair up and I said, well, I want to know where did you get this information? He said, well, look. He said, a black man gave him a book called The Black Man Origin of Space, talking about Sirius. Gave him this book back in the early 70s to the late 60s, and he read the book and gave it back to the guy. When he really got into this, this particular area again, he tried to get the book, but it's earlier than the book that he said, because this book came out in 1981, and it's already out of print. And this book... It's called A Rebirth of Pan by Jim Brandon. And in this book, it gives you a little bit about the war, because I said I wanted to have some documents between this thing and see was this stuff right. And yes, not only do you have a whole section in George Hunt Williamson books about the evil Orions or the evil Sahus to give you the whole breakdown, but in this book it talks about the war in heaven where it actually gives you hostility between Sirius and Orion. And he said that George Hunt Williamson, he's quoting from this book, uh, from uh, his friends from Sirius reportedly told him about these evil Orions and many others who claim to uh, to uh, cross paths with these UFO uh, uh, people in America. Some of these white people that cross paths with them said also too that these people was no joke. And there were some evil Sahus or evil uh, uh, people from actually from Orion and from a section of the Pleiades. Now, you go to the white boys and stuff, they give you all this stuff about the Pleiades. That's their people. Now, when we get into we're going to get into this stuff. Believe me, you all stick around because it's going to get very interesting because I'm going to link all this stuff together. Might seem like I'm rambling now, but I'm linking it together. Now, the Pleiades is another constellation called the Holy Seven Reaches. They call them for the Pleiades and all this, and they're all glorified about the Pleiades. And these white people have got in, in cahoots with the Pleiades and also with the Orions. Well, which is a part of the Pleiades, that whole thing. They have a, a joining link with the Orions. Supposedly, you have the Philadelphia experiment that went on in the 1930s with a guy by the name of Nikola Tesla, Tesla which is a, a, a white scientist that used to could go up on the, the Akashic records of the mental plane and get devices from outer space in his mind, transfer them on paper, and give them to, uh, uh, and, and would give all these inventions that used to come out, all types of stuff. How many inventions was it? Hundreds of inventions and stuff. Getting it off of the mental, or the astral plane, or the, the mental plane, or the Akashic records. He had tapped into this. Well, he was working also with the American government, 
and they had something called the Philadelphia Experiment. You can get the movie, the Philadelphia Experiment, for those of you who haven't seen the movie. 98% of the movie is real. And there's also a book, and also you can go and rent the video from um, uh, Black Media Communications on the Philadelphia Experiment, where they ha actually had time travel, where they transported some sailors from what, 1940 what? 1943 to 1983. And some of the people that was on the, that was in this because it was doing it was along with the Navy, and some of the people that was actually working with this when they transported these two sailors, two brothers, to 1983, some of the same men that they had seen the same day was already aged and was living in 1983 when these people came and they transported. And this stuff is real. It is as real as you sitting here. If you can think of it, it exists in the universe. You see, the white people know that science fiction is actually science fact. And the stuff that you call real is actually fiction. There's an old saying, truth is stranger than fiction. That's why Oxford Bookstore, both um, the one on Far Road and the one on um, Peachtree Battle, the used one, they got two huge comic book stores. And that's where their kids are learning all the science. They got a group of kids called the cyberpunks. I happen to meet some of these kids. Let me get into the Philadelphia Experiment and I'll get, anyway, and I'll tell you about that. Or uh, remind me. The Philadelphia Experiment is, they invented, invented time travel. Anyway, they sent these two sailors back to 1943 and one sailor had jumped over the boat and he started deteriorating fast and they, Took, they had to go get his father, took him back into the early 19, 18, um, 20th century, had another baby, took that baby, snatched that baby into 1943, put the other brother's body in that baby, the soul in that baby, and so on. And this stuff is real. The government has been doing, dealing with this for, for, for years. That particular experiment went into what you call the Phoenix Project, which is 99% of all the stuff coming from the Phoenix Project is coming from the people from the from the Orions, who are giving them this information. They gave them this information, starting with Eisenhower, they gave them this information and say, look, uh, we'll, if, if you give us some land down here, because Orion is dying, if the planet is dying and the system is dying based on that water that happened, so they gotta seek refuge on new land. Well, since Earth is one of the lowest planets that sunk into the lowest part of the universe, the third dimension, Everybody's trying to get down here for two reasons. One, to get a spiritual enliftment because this earth is getting ready to be lifted up. And the other is to try to take over because we are backwards and primitive people. Now, they made an a, a, a actual agreement with the government in 1959, I think it was Eisenhower, told them, look, you give us some places underneath the earth or under the, on the land and we'll give you this information that it'll take you all the next thousand years to get with. But remember now, the information that they gave them is inferior information because it's, the information they gave them is at least 80,000 years old compared to Sirius. I will back up. We in a war, right? We got backup. We got all the backup we need. We don't have to pick up one gun. Now, so they gave them this particular information, and this is where the Phoenix Project comes out of, and this is where you have, have your top secret military UFO programs that's going on in this particular uh, project. You can get a book called The Montauk Project. Who's the book by, you know? Or the, the, we'll give you the name of the book, The Montauk Project. It gives you both the Philadelphia Experiment and the Phoenix Project. So they have perfected, well they have gone into time travels, the first realms of it. They can do the time travel thing. The first realms. They hadn't gone to the overall part of it cause in, cause, because the interplanetary brotherhood is getting ready to stop that. But uh, what's the name of that the, the guy? Uh, uh, Preston B. Nichols with Peter Moon. Preston B. Nichols, the Montauk Project, talks about the Philadelphia Experiment. Now the Orion people, now the Orion people, if somebody just picked that up or whatever, and do, they gave them this particular information. And this is what the government is using. Now that's why I told you about these, these particular UFOs that can land on the ground, they are, they are governed by electricity, they can land anywhere. That's the inferior stuff that the Orions gave them. The Orions have those particular type spaceships that they've been doing their stuff in because they are back was because they have been stopped by the Interplanetary Brotherhood and they never did develop a serious uh, technology enough to, to go into what you call the spiritual realms of 
UFOlogy or uh, 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 technology, which technology is based on the spirituality. This is why some of the UFOs, the ones from Sirius, can disappear and reappear right before your eyes. This is why some of you all don't see them because you don't have your third eye open and why some people that's, that's spiritual enough see them all the time. This is the type of stuff. But anyway, uh, uh, a lot of that is also in other tongues of the flesh. Now, I'm getting on with some other stuff, but what's happening is you have a particular section that's going on with, um, with the actual um, Orions and the government dealing with the particular Orions. Now, you have the, the, the woman, Maine Blavatsky, in the Theosophical Society, wrote the books The Secret Doctrines and Isis Unveiled. Two massive volumes, about a thousand pages, pages in each volume. Got all these books and got one or two pages on Sirius. But it was interesting what she said about Sirius. She wanted to put it in there, but then again, they weren't going to focus on Sirius because they was telling the white people, you need to get to a, another certain place in the constellation. Reason why? Because Sirius is the retribution place. It's the place where you reap what you sow, and so the cause and effect, and we're going to do the effect in, at a particular time. You get that right. And this is what this whole planet is governed behind. Now, Blavatsky, but in this particular page, she said, well, if you want to look at heaven, find out where it is. She said, well, we must, we must look at the relationship between Sirius and the constellation of Canis Major and our sun. Said our sun is about 20 times larger or 20 times greater than the earth. But it falls into insignificance to a greater sun that is about 20 times or 30 times greater than it. And that is Sirius. That's the first thing she says. The second page she talks about the same thing about Isis bringing wheat from Sirius. And also she said that Sirius is also the lord of the Buddhas. Well, we come to find out that Sirius is the lord of all the religions because all the religions at first started from black people. You understand? And they had one goal in sight. All we're arguing over is the different interpretations or the linguistic interpretations or the cultural or customs interpretation of the same science. You get that? Now, but she has about seven or eight or nine pages on the Pleiades. And she talks about this Pleiades that they're trying to get to and all. Well, there's a lady by the name of Alice Bailey that is in the Theosophical Society that, that is also a part of Blavatsky's group. Then later on, after Blavatsky died, she started doing channeling. Let me tell you what white people are into, how we're not advanced. White people are into channeling. Well, they can channel through meditation, can channel, and through other types of devices, parts of the universe and get information. They're doing this stuff. I meet them every day. I meet these white people every day that's doing all this stuff. Well, anyway, she channeled this stuff mainly from the Pleiades, and she says in the book that, number one, serious is the Lord of judgment and the Lord of, of karma. You reap what you sow, my yacht, cause and effect. You understand? What goes around comes around. The law, or the law of retribution, of reciprocity. She said, but our goal is to get to the, the, the Pleiades. We're trying to bypass Sirius and go straight to the Pleiades. Then comes a group of white people that say they are from the constellation of Lyra. See, they didn't see, see uh, uh, Blavatsky and them never did say where they were from. They just said that um, we're trying to get to the Pleiades because they knew what was coming with them from Sirius. Stick with me because I'm going to tie it all in. Are you with me? Okay, now. Then you have Lyra. Now, this is where actually white people say they are from. Lyra. You know they're lying because in their literature, they say that uh, well, the people from Sirius think they have a personal relationship for Earth because they were the first people on it. But actually, this was the Lyran's project, but the Syrians beat us to it, those evil Syrians. In the process of trying to put down a particular group, they end up telling the truth. You understand how that goes? So we want to get you into this particular thing or, or where we are focused and what is the goods and the gold is getting ready to come to you because the people got a present for you. It's all in you. We so hooked up until I, I just smile saying, hey, we are hooked up. But you in here got to do a particular job. Don't worry about the people out on the, on, on, um, outside. Some of them ain't going to make it, but a lot of them are. 
It's just us. We have to do particular job. Now, also the Dogon tells this particular story. The Dogon said that Sirius had to become their over had to overcome their forms of the devil in Sirius or set Typhon in Sirius. And they said by this, they said that the the Dogon, uh, uh, the dwellers in the Sirius systems, she said the Dogon said that the dwellers in the Sirius system had to be overcome their own particular set. But since the Osirian drama was transferred to our Sirius system, and the earth in particular, we are now faced with some battle of our Syrian cousins fought in another time zone. Well, let me explain what's going on. All the stuff that went on with Orion and this whole war in heaven, you see, up in the space, you have, it's all a mental plane that's going on up there, where your own particular thoughts can manifest. Your own particular thoughts are things. Some of the thoughts that you are getting don't even come from you. They come from people that thought these thoughts a couple thousand, thousand millions of years ago that's just now manifesting in you. That's why in this book they got a whole section on the wanderers. And guess who the wanderers are? The wanderers are you. Where well, they tell you never be afraid to talk about an idea. Because you think that you are the only one that thought about it. Some reason you don't say nothing. You'll wait till somebody else documented where you go, oh, guess what? I had the same kind of idea. When I started getting on the UFO stuff, all these people started telling, coming, telling me all these stories. Wouldn't say nothing to nobody else because you know why? Because everybody said, you're crazy. Well, you have ideas in your mind all the time, great ideas, stuff that can help your own people, but you never say anything because you, you don't know that in actual out of this stuff exists. You're just thinking it's some crazy stuff. But they say, never be afraid to express an idea because you were the only one that thought about it. You're not the only one that thought about it. That is a thought that your ancestors thought of thousands of years ago. It's like the brother uh, uh, Jabril of the Nation of Islam, who is the scholar of the Nation of Islam, said, I never thought of a, a single great idea ever in my life. I never thought of a single great idea ever in my life. Because, because we are hooked up with the cosmos, the thoughts are actual things. So your thoughts are thoughts. This, you're just reaching in the universe with your mind and getting them and using them for your own benefit. Well, what happened was, because you had this war on Sirius, this war on Sirius, because you had this war, what happened was, these thoughts traveled through the universe for thousands of millions of years. Since the Earth is on what you call a third dimensional plane, which means everything that gets trapped down here comes into the physical. You, you get that? Everything get, comes into the physical, these thoughts enter into our realm and start instant replaying themselves all over again. So in actuality, we don't exist. All that we're going through is something that happened a couple of million years ago that's just replaying itself out. The good part about that is we know that we already won that war. You understand what I'm saying? You see how beautiful that is? It's an re instant replay of things that went on a couple of millions of years ago because this is such a low point that fell into the third dimension. These this actual thoughts materialize into things and it instant replay itself. In actuality, all what we're going through is something that went on before. And we know the end result is we kick behind and the people from Sirius whip the Orions behind. That's why the Orions is coming here now and in cahoots with our enemies, the United States government and all the action secret societies and all this stuff and giving them science, you see. And the point about that is this. It boils down to this. That even though they got time travel, even though they got time travel, what happened was uh, they, uh, the time travel they got is miniature. So the white boys are trying to do something with time as a cycle of time, not just transport. They're trying to actually affect time itself as we know it, based on what the Orions are giving them, because they know that their time is about up. Their time is up in your lifetime in a few years. So now the people from Syria say, well, the race is on. Before you do this, we're going to come in and tear you down. That's why Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that if the if the white boy 
find the true meaning of time out or the atom, it will take all of the interplanetary brotherhood to take him off the planet. That's why the rush is on to get to them before they go into and tap into some other stuff that will actually affect the universe. Now, let's go into some things from Sirius. In the 1960s, in Spain, a group of people contacted some people in Spain, and the name of these people were called UMO. U-M-M-O, uh, uh, which is described, it says what it is, is it's a cosmic federation of planets has been receiving, received by people in Spain. The people in Spain got this information from these people from uh, UMO that claim to have detail Details on the, on the origin of civilization. So that's nobody but our people that know all of this stuff that went on before. Now, it says, this, this is the quote taken from the actual, the people from Umo. And I'll tell you what, Umo is a code for another word. It says, we wish to inform the planet Earth. Our origin and purpose are visit to you, uh, uh, purpose of vi uh, visit to you. We come from Umo a planet that rotates around the star Imaya, recorded under the designation of the wolf. Now, Imaya, or Imaya, is an uh, 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 African deity from the Yoruba. It's also Imaya in the Dogons, which is the people that, that supposedly uh, that, that got all the stuff from Sirius, say that it's the third planet around Sirius that our ancestors and our people live on. They say in the designation of the wolf, the wolf is a dog and it means the dog star. You understand? These people were contacted and they gave them this information about Imaya. Now this is a key point about the Imaya thing, is the Dogon told them not only do we have a Sirius B that the European couldn't see, which is the burnout star, we also have a Sirius C that a scientist in the 1950s saw it twice and never saw it again. And this is supposedly where our people are on. For those of you who didn't get that Dogon story about our people are on a particular planet. And at a particular time, they're going to return with the ancestors of man and come from the water, and they're going to subdue their evil brother, Set, or the evil brother Oku, which means the pale fox, pale meaning white, or the governments of the world. Because some of these white people down here don't, believe it or not, I've, I've been noticing this stuff. Let's not be hypocrites. Some of these white people now don't do no more to you than your own people do to you. They're just out there. Let's just face 